Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to uh, this press conference. We're coming to you live uh, from our Bureau of Elections, our Elections Division here in Oakland County, under the capable uh, supervision of Joe Roselle, who is here as well. So thank you, Joe, for opening up your doors to us today. And we're here to talk about a really important topic, which is elections. Uh, before I get there, let me introduce the other folks who have joined me today. Uh, Dave Woodward, who is the chair of our Board of Commissioners and who has really led on this initiative, uh, getting a task force together, uh, including some of the other folks that you see here, uh, and really uh, had the original question slash idea of what can we do working together to make sure that our elections uh, are as safe and secure uh, and convenient as possible for our residents. And that's what we want to talk to you about today. So of course, intimately involved with that is our wonderful county clerk, Lisa Brown. And I thank you, Lisa, for all of your help with this. Uh, um, some of the people here today are members of our Oakland Together 2020 Democracy Initiative, and I'll have Dave Woodward talk a little bit more about that. But we also have some of our local clerks here, and I'm really grateful not only for them being with us here today, but more importantly for the work that they have done over the last several weeks in helping to bring this recommendation forward, a recommendation that I am very excited and honored to be supportive of. We have from my uh, home community of Ferndale, we have Marnie McGrath, who is the city clerk in Ferndale. We have Melanie Hallis, Hallis? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, from Royal Oak, the clerk in Royal Oak. We have Yvette Talley from uh, the great city of Lathrop Village. She is the clerk there. And we also have Debbie Miller from Rose Township, the clerk in Rose Township. And they have been very active in helping to formulate these recommendations. Uh, and, they'll, and you'll have an opportunity to to hear more about that from them. Um, so we're here to talk about elections, and they're, they're coming up, obviously. We have one that's coming up literally three weeks from today, and that's the August 4th election. And then election. And as I said, there's a lot of smart people who have been thinking very seriously about what are we going to do to make sure that these elections go as smoothly as possible and, most importantly, uh, as safely as possible. Um, the, obviously, elections today have drawn sort of unprecedented interest. We have seen the number of people choosing to vote in the last several years rising dramatically for all sorts of reasons. And so we know we have to be prepared for that. But because of the challenges of COVID-19, uh, at the same time that there's more interest in our elections, there are additional challenges that, uh, that we have been presented with. And so, uh, as in lots of other ways, we're going to lean into this challenge and figure out if there's a way uh, that we can make this as, 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 uh, as convenient as possible. So that's why the Oakland Together 2020 Democracy, Democracy Initiative is so important right now. And, and, and that we have the board and the clerks here to talk about just what this means in Oakland County. What does it look like to have elections that are safe and secure? Uh, obviously, um, we know that with the coronavirus, uh, we're going to have a record number of absentee ballots. We've already seen the trend for people voting absentee increasing over the last few years. But this year in particular, you don't have to be a city clerk or a rocket scientist to know more of our residents are going to choose to vote absentee. We, we, we know that, right? And by the way, if you haven't registered to vote yet, please go online and do so. Do it now, okay? It's very easy if you go to our Clerk Register of Deeds page, which is on the oakgov.com website, and I'm sure Lisa Brown uh, will be able to help you through that if you don't know that. I would encourage you uh, to get on there now, register to vote. Uh, because we are, all of us, committed to making sure that these elections run as smoothly as possible. So what does that look like? Now these folks are going to go into more detail about that. But look, we know we have to have enough election workers and that those election workers need the right technology to do their jobs and to count these ballots, especially the absentee ballots. And we don't want them to be overwhelmed. We want to assist them where we can to get these elections done right. Elections are vital to our democracy, uh, and the timely and accurate reporting of those elections is critical to the confidence of our voters. 
Election workers need PPE, and so we need to outfit them with the tools and the, and the, the equipment that they need to be safe uh, during the elections. Uh, here's another thing. If you weren't aware, uh, most absentee ballots require a stamp. Uh, is that an impediment to having people vote? Um, and I know some communities are now offering ballots with prepaid, prepaid postage, and I congratulate those communities that, that, who have done that. And we know that while postage might be too late for the August election, I'm, I'm hopeful that we can do more of that in November. So with that sort of overview, I want to introduce the, 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 the chair of the board of, of commissioners, my friend Dave Woodward, who, like I said, has really been instrumental in making sure that we were identifying with our local clerks and our county clerk, Joe Roselle, and all of the folks that are involved in elections, all of the things that we needed to be mindful of. And so, Dave Woodward, if you want to come up and, and give us some more detail, uh, that would be awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Executive Coulter. Uh, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your support uh, on this initiative, which we're calling the Oakland Together Democracy Initiative. Uh, as Executive Coulter summarized, that aside from the uh, unprecedented uh, global pandemic that we're, we see ourselves holding elections in this current environment, we also had, uh, as a result of voters approving an election law in 2018, uh, that makes it easier for people to vote by mail, that makes it easier for people to register to vote. What that looks like? Now, these and folks it, are going to go into more detail about that. But look, we know we have to have it to vote right. in election law on 2018. Okay. Uh, that makes okay. it easier for people to vote by mail. Okay. That makes it easier for people to register to vote. All right. Okay. So if you're uh, members of the media, if you can mute your, uh, your phone, we're getting some feedback here. Can the member of the media please mute your phone? Sorry about that. Go ahead. No worries. Okay. I, I apologize. Uh, sound check. Um, but uh, as I was saying that uh, we were already going into this, the 2020 election um, with people's uh, ability to cast an absentee ballot easier, registering to vote easier, uh, creating its own unique challenges, and then to add the conditions of a global pandemic on top of it, just add that much um, greater challenge uh, to the situation. Now, we are so fortunate in Oakland County. We have um, the most amazing local clerks. We have an incredible elections uh, director and, and, and staff here, a, an incredible county clerk that making, uh, making sure that every vote gets counted and, break, and going, breaking through every barrier necessary to ensure that that happens. We have that in place day in and day out. Um, what, what we realize in looking across the country, the Wisconsin election, Georgia election, on the national stage, uh, we saw uh, what, we, what I would call a breakdown democracy and barriers clearly on display that made it harder for people to count their ballots. And so a number of us uh, came together and thought that was absolutely essential. If we could get volunteers to step up uh, we, uh, to help make recommendations, we could actually lead in Oakland County in a way that, uh, frankly, no other county has been able to lean into solving this problem. And so we formed a little over a month ago the uh, Oakland County Safe, Healthy, and Secure uh, Elections Advisory Group. And I do want to, uh, Executive Coulter mentioned some of them. I asked my colleague, uh, County Commissioner Nancy Quarles, to chair the effort, um, as well with the participation of Joe Roselle, our uh, Director of Elections in Oakland County, Marnie McGrath, Melanie Halas, uh, Yvette Talley, Debbie Miller, our, uh, and many of our local clerks, Jerry Rinsler, Rinsler from the League of Women Voters, Robert Wynn with the Disability Network of Oakland and Macomb County, and Marissa Kovac with uh, uh, the ACLU of Michigan to come together uh, to I mean, meet on a weekly basis. Um, and the task was very clear. As quickly as we can make recommendations, we would bring it to the board, work with the executive, work with the, uh, the Oakland County Clerk's Office to actually put things in place. And you're going to hear um, some of those things in detail from the, pre, uh, the following speakers, but I'm happy to say that we have been advancing the policies of, of the recommendations of this um, committee in record pace. Uh, we're on schedule to do even more this week and next. Um, and the goal of all of this is to eliminate every barrier for voter participation, uh, to make certain that our workers are as safe as we possibly 
we can make it um, to ensure that every vote gets cast and every vote gets counted quickly um, and with the confidence um, that, uh, that, that, that voters' uh, ballots are cast. And I have no doubt we're able to be able to do that and we'll continue to move whatever resources are necessary to make sure that that happens. Um, and uh, so without any further ado, I guess I'll hand it back to the executive. To I mean, continue I mean, to introduce some of the other people who will talk about some of the specific things that uh, this ta this uh, initiative all encompasses, and the full list of things will be on the county website following us. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. So um, if you're not aware, you know, the, the, the clerks are sort of a patchwork throughout the county, right? Each community has a clerk, and then we have a county clerk. And, and part of their success over the years, I think, has been the way they've worked hand in hand so cooperatively together. So I'm delighted to have our county clerk here, Lisa Brown, to talk a little bit about her role in this, the role of the county clerks, and then maybe just a little bit about what our residents can expect uh, during the August 4th and the November election. So, Lisa Brown, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, as uh, County Exec uh, Coulter said, um, elections are vital to our democracy and clerks are vital gears in the operation of the democratic process. And I have enjoyed partnering with our local clerks um, over the years, usually in voter registration drives. But now we have a different opportunity. Um, with the signing of House Bill 5141, local clerks can contract with their county clerk to process their absentee ballots. And we will be doing that um, in August for the August election for about a third of the communities in Oakland County. So funding from the board has allowed us to purchase the needed equipment, some of which you see on the table next to me. We have um, a high-speed envelope opener because we will have a lot of envelopes that need to be open and we have a short window because right now we can't open them until the polls open at 7 a.m. on election day. So um, we'll be using that and then our high-speed tabulator. So the funding allowed us to purchase that equipment and also to train and hire workers. Um, you know, in the middle of a pandemic, it's a challenge. Everything is a challenge right now, but uh, election workers need to be trained before an election. They have to be certified. And limiting how many people can be in a room, we will be able to have a program um, that uh, workers can watch on a smart device and get the training they need. And we'll be making that available to poll workers as well as the workers that will hopefully be working for us um, at the county absentee counting board. And by the way, if anyone is interested in working on our AV counting board at the county, they can find the application online um, at our website, www.oakgov.com slash clerk rod slash elections and you can submit that this week um, so when it comes to voting we see more spoiled ballots in the august primary elections than any other election and we want to ensure every citizen's vote counts so we are doing a voter education program reminding voters use a blue or black ink pen when filling in the box next to your choice don't use a check mark don't use an X, don't circle your choice, you're gonna fill in that box next to your choice. And remember, in August, you can only vote for one party's candidates. And that includes when you flip the ballot over. You have to be consistent on the back side. So whatever party you voted on the front, make sure you're voting for that same party on the back. And then also don't forget the nonpartisan section of the ballot, which will be the third column all the way to the right. So you can fill out two columns, one partisan and then the nonpartisan. Um, and when you return your ballot, be sure to sign the outer envelope. Um, and it must be returned to your city or township clerk's office by 8 p.m. on election day. And I know um, many of our clerks, I know, um, again, a County Exec Coulter spoke about postage, which I love hearing if we can pay for postage in November. That puts a big smile on my face. Um, but also um, secured large drop boxes at, um, the, in each community so that you don't have to worry about the postage that you can drop off your ballot. So um, I think I turn it back over to County Exec Coulter to talk about more, um, but make sure you get your 
ballot filled out. Oh, and if you um, spoil your ballot, if you spill coffee on your ballot, or you rip it, or you made a mistake, you changed your mind, you can call your local clerk, contact your local clerk, I shouldn't say call, um, and say, I've spoiled my ballot, I need a new one, okay? Please don't use whiteout, that messes with the machines and everything else, but um, make sure you get your ballot in, we wanna make sure everybody's vote counts, thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Lisa, and um, I know we're not going to hear from all the clerks here, but I know that they have just, you know, they're on the front lines of this, and they've been innovative, and they've been flexible, uh, and even though uh, posted, you know, we, we're not supplying postage in this election, I know many clerks have drop-off boxes, and I encourage you to take advantage of those. I know that my city clerk even went as far as having drive-through um, drive voting in Ferndale, so I'm just, I'm always so proud of the creativity and innovation of our, of our local clerks and uh, they're the ones that make this work so thank you to all of our clerks that are here um, so I want I want to encourage our residents we're trying to remove every barrier that we can that COVID may have thrown up at us um, to to inhibit your ability to vote uh, so please it's now on you please take advantage of your not only your 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 privilege but your right to vote in this election and in all elections um, and with that, I would like to open it up to any questions that the media might have. We'll, we'll start with the one that's here with us in person if you have any questions, uh, and otherwise we'll go to the phone. You're good? Okay. Bill, you want to help me? Yeah, okay. So if you're on the phone, I know there's a few reporters, I don't know if you have questions or not, but this would be an opportunity if you have any questions. Uh, WXYZ, we heard was on the phone, is there anyone from WXYZ? Mike from Mayors, are you here? Mike, are you on the line? With any questions? If so, just unmute yourself. We probably did such a good job of describing it. And Caroline from Michigan Radio, are you with us? Or anyone, anyone, this is your opportunity. If you have a question, if you are on the line and you have a question of us uh, that we didn't so succinctly answer, uh, please feel free to unmute yourself now. Yeah, go ahead. So are plans subject to change moving forward if conditions of the virus change one way or another? Yes, <laughs> because things have changed, right? This is a, a novel virus that we're still learning about, and so reacting to it is still obviously um, a challenge. But, but um, I will say, and I don't want to speak for the, the clerks, and maybe the, the county clerk wants to add into this, but the, you know they've done a lot. Of, they met weekly. They thought through every possible scenario that we could imagine today, um, but that doesn't mean that they couldn't reconvene or, or, or think about things in the future. I don't know if there's examples, Mr. Chair, that you might have. Uh, well, I, I can, and I mean, and Executive Coulter, if it's, I mean, it's okay, because I think it's important from a local clerk's perspective to be able to talk about what some of, what some of these initiatives that Oakland County's um, been able to lean into. Buying additional equipment to making sure that the equipment is there to be able to help support the processing and running of elections. Um, if there is any personal protection equipment that's not uh, able to be uh, uh, um, uh, received through some other means, Oakland County is prepared to step into it. We talked about postage, and I, I just want to make sure it's clear. Um, the ballots have already gone out for August, um, yeah. but we will be introducing a proposal this week. Um, Oakland County will be the first county in all of Michigan to pay for postage for the absentee ballots in November. Uh, and uh, we, we want to do that. A, Oakland County has already leaned in to say we really want to encourage everyone to cast an absentee ballot as much as possible because that reduces the number of traffic uh, through the polling locations um, to reduce exposure I mean, as we hold an election during um, a pandemic, um, but it will also make certain that um, we eliminate that barrier. Um, I mean, a, a couple stamps um, doesn't seem like maybe a lot to a lot of people, but it's, it is a barrier. And we're, we're, I mean, I'm so glad there's a number of communities in Oakland County decided to do that anyway. Um, as a county, we're gonna do that countywide come November. In addition um, to making sure that we continue to educate people about this, the, the security and safety of their ballot I mean, going forward, uh, voting by mail, and, um, and it's just the confidence that I have in all our local clerks that are running these elections. And so um, I don't know, Executive, if you want to have, 
one of our local clerks to talk about. Yeah, I think, how, you know, how about our Royal Oak clerk? Why don't you kind of come up here and talk about, come on up here, I'm going to drag you up here. By the way, the other nice thing about starting in August is August's participation is usually less than November, so I don't want to call this a, a, a dry run because obviously we take this election very seriously. I know I do. But, um, but, but it will also help us see what else might be needed for November uh, when we know with a presidential election uh, that we'll have much higher turnout, but maybe, uh, yeah. Hello. Um, just as we touched upon earlier, the first thing that the uh, Advisory Council did was we did a survey to all of the Oakland County clerks in the area to see what was important to them to make it so um, it would, we would be able to have whatever help they need for the elections. And one of the top things that um, all of our concerns was is election workers, because a lot of us have a lot of seniors that have always worked the elections for us. But obviously with COVID right now, there's a lot of concern and they're not as comfortable working this election and that's fine. But now we have to look for new things to recruit. So one of the things that we had suggested was a, um, like an additional kind of a, a appreciation bonus for August and November. So we're recommending that there's an addition, additional $50 for each worker that's paid. And um, we're hoping that that will definitely recruit some more people. Uh, they already touched upon the voter education. That's definitely huge. Um, Joe Roselle has actually put together a postcard that's going to be going out to all the voters that have received a ballot, him and his staff and Clerk Brown. Um, so that's something, as Clerk Brown stated about only, vote is, uh, only voting in the partisan section. So that's super important because a lot of people, I know in my jurisdiction, were up so many for the absentees that they might not know that they can only vote in one section. And um, so this hopefully will help that. So we have that. And also, um, event, education, and so is there. Um, I think that's it. So. Yeah, so hopefully we get more recruitments. That's our biggest thing. To me, that's the biggest uh, issue that we have. And obviously, with numbers going up daily, uh, we keep hearing new information. So we're just trying to do the best that we can and get enough workers and social distance in the precincts. We're just all of us in Oakland County. We have uh, gloves, masks, sanitizer. Um, we're going to be social distancing. So that's all I have. Oh, of course. Yeah, please. So back to, to your question, um, clerks have to be one of the most flexible elected officials there are. Uh, just when we get that one process set, the legislature changes something. Um, the passage of 18.3 um, had a huge impact. And um, our clerks do a fabulous job of, of staying on top of it and figuring out, okay, what do I do now? You know, what we saw in May, and we didn't have any elections in May in Oakland County, but across the state, other counties did. And the executive order that came down was that there would be one open precinct, um, per at least, per municipality for, you know, if they had an election going on. So it's, we have a lot to juggle with of staying on top of, but we do it. Right? So whatever it is, if it's an executive order, if it's something the legislature passes down, something from the Secretary of State, we all work together to make sure that we have the process um, in place and to ensure that everybody's vote is counted and that it's secure and accurate. Uh, and and uh, when the Royal Oak Clerk mentioned the PPE and the like, just know they're not here with us today, but our health department is sort of always hovering in the background for help. Uh, and so they are also working with our local clerks to make sure that they can interpret the guidelines and, and, <clears throat> and practice all of that as, as safely as possible. So I certainly appreciate the, the health department's involvement in this as well. Uh, any last questions? All right, I want to thank you all for being here. Uh, stay safe and vote, vote, vote. <laughs> Thanks, everybody.